Speaking of skills and developing that, talk about the six step process for leaders, executives, entrepreneurs to harness their intuitive intelligence. You can talk about this in your book. Uh, actually, it's pretty much the spine of my book. And so I lead the reader through the six steps to tap into their intuitive center or their inner compass. So basically, how it starts is with a mindset shift. So the idea is first, how do I, instead of trying to find my intuition and achieve that, how do I actually first take a mindset of being more receptive? So that's the first bit is, what if I'm not trying to seek my intuition, but I actually make room for intuition to find me? And so I have to first learn to be receptive to the information that I'm picking up in my strategy session, my one-on-one -on -one meeting, meeting with a new customer. So that's that first step is that reception. Reception, right? Okay. And so the second one is once I have an, a perspective of being more receptive, the second one is then to slow down. That's so hard. Right. This in is New York the hardest City, bit, right? At least. <laughs> New York City, London, Tokyo, so wherever nice. you are, um, even in the countryside with today's social media, we're bombarded with information more than we ever have been before. So the, the next key step is how do we slow down our mindset and our, literally our blood pressure, our breath, literally get into a slower space. What, what breathing exercises, do you also encourage those For sure. Well? Yeah, breathing exercises is one of the best way to slow down more to that subconscious state. You actually change your brain states when you, when you breathe and slow down, and you open up your panoramic awareness in a different way. Ooh, I like that, right? panoramic awareness. It's amazing. It's like the 360 view of what's happening around you. You know, one way I can talk about this is if you've ever seen those 3D prints, where you're staring at all these dots, and it doesn't mean anything when you focus your eyes, but when you relax your gaze and you have that panoramic awareness, the 3D image starts to come alive, that's intuition. So if I start to open up my awareness, I'm gonna become aware of other things that are happening in the room or in the space. And so that's that whole second step is that slowing down allows that to happen. So reception, slowing, slowing down. down. The third step then is um, having to deal with our inner critic. Because what happens is when we slow down, we hear other voices in the head, right, that are like, hey, distractions. this is stupid, we don't have time for this, let's go back to work, we gotta get on that deadline, and we all have that inner critic. And so part of what I've realized in this process is that when we slow down, we start becoming aware of all of our inner noise, and so how do we differentiate the voice of our inner critic from the voice of our intuition? And how do you do that? So that's a whole <laughs> piece of, that's where I go into the deeper. And how do you know yeah. it's the inner critic and not it's almost kind of like this analogy of having the angel and the devil on your shoulder, right? Yeah. How do you know, how do you distinguish what's a distraction and what's actually like sound advice, listening to your gut? Exactly. So one way that I've created a distinction around this is that usually your inner critic is going to have a lot of, um, a it's going to sound like a broken record. It's a broken narrative from your whole history. And there's sometimes a lot of emotional charge to it. A lot of times with intuition, it's just very clear and clean, like, oh, I'm not supposed to take on this client, but it's not a big drama. Or, oh, this hire is not a fit. And you know that intuitively, but it's not a big story and a big drama about it, right? But a lot of times the inner critic, there's gonna be a lot of charge emotionally, a whole narrative around it, a backstory, and it's probably one that's very familiar. So that's where that inner critic forms. So part of the work is then, how do I distinguish and differentiate which that uh, next third step gets into? So then you're more locked into your voice of your intuition which leads to the fourth step. Okay, wait, so receive, mm -hmm. slow down, inner, befriend your inner critic. Befriend your mm -hmm. inner critic, okay. So you actually befriend it instead of fight it all the time, right? So once you befriend it and you become the driver of the vehicle of self, not your critic, mm -hmm. then what happens is you start to tune into your body. And then you can go in a deeper level of listening to your inner signals and cues. And so I have a whole chapter called Your Body is Wiser Than Your Mind. Because mm -hmm. your mind will throw you off. Right? A lot of times, it will. that critic, the, uh, the different narratives that we have, the fears that we have, those kind of things. So that's when we tune into just what's happening in my body right now and how do I use that as data for my relationships and what's happening in the moment, especially in, in business and outside of business. So that's really tuning into the body. And so the whole next uh, fourth section goes really deep into that. Then the fifth section is how do you ask for guidance? Mm -hmm. How do you actually develop a relationship with your intuition? Right? So now that you've really started to identify your signals and cues, because everyone has a different intuitive language, and that's an important piece too. Like we talked about dream states. Right. Sometimes people get feelings and, and, and sensations and kinesthetics. Mm -hmm. Some people get images. Some people get audio, sound, and messaging that way. So part of it is learning your body and how do you get information. Once you establish that, and you can figure that out by looking at hindsight, 
like when you've got a strong gut reaction before. Like oh, we always say hindsight is what, right? 20, 20 And once you get that, then you'll start to track back at, oh, that's how my intuition speaks to me. So it's important to track those moments. So then the fifth step is asking for guidance. And you, so if, for example, if I'm confronted by a career choice and I don't know if I should choose A or B, that's when I'm starting to tune in and actually ask my, you know, my inner guidance around, okay, tell me body here. <laughs> tell me uh, body. Do I go left or right here? <laughs> And I've had actually, in my book, I've interviewed a business owner, for example, where he actually said, should I stay in this job? And give me a, give me a, a sign either way. And he broke out into rashes. Mm. He, bro he broke out I into mean, a rash. I mean, talk about a clear sign. Literally, like that psychosomatic connection where literally his body was speaking to him of like, get out of this job. And he did, and it was the best thing he could have done. It's in, it's in the book here. That's really tapping deeply into that intuition. Exactly. And he said he, he, don't, he didn't know where that came from because he had never even thought about doing that before, about checking in with himself on that level. But he did, and it paid off. And then the last step is once we establish that relationship by asking for guidance, the last step then is taking action. And this is one of the things that we usually pause on is I might know what I'm feeling, and I know what I need to do, but I'm afraid to have that conversation. I'm afraid to talk to my boss. I'm afraid to deal with my partner. I'm afraid to set a boundary with my client. Whatever that might be, even though I know in my bones that that's what needs to happen. Right. So the last step is actually putting it into action. Because if you don't put your intuitive intelligence into action, it's going to start to fade away. And you're not honoring your wisdom. You're not honoring your deeper intelligence. That's what really, this is really about. Okay, when you think about your day-to-day, -day, yeah. you're a CEO, you're an entrepreneur in your day-to-day, -day, you know, what, how much time are you devoting to tapping in, or is it just something that is, it, you encourage should just happen naturally? I don't know if that's clear, but you know, how much time am I really taking if it's making a decision, if it's hiring someone to join my company? How is the intuition, how am I tapping into that in a sense of time? Yeah. Is this something that's just happening through the course of a day? Mm -hmm. Or do I really take 15 minutes, you know, t close my office door and go through these six steps? I think both are important. I think it's important to have some kind of practice where you're touching in with yourself and checking in with yourself daily. So I do think having an intentional practice, even if it's 10 minutes, or five minutes, which seems like a lot for today's world, right. to turn everything off. It is hard and to do that. And I mean turn that. everything off, right? right? So, you can, so you can go in, internal. And so I think having some kind of basic practice every day gives you that touchstone so that when you're in the heat of the moment, you have that anchor point. And you can come back to that and right away check in with, oh, oh yeah, got it, my solar plexus. That's my way of getting information, for example. And so then when I'm in a, you know, immediate, I have to make an immediate decision in the line of fire, I can quickly ch uh, check in with my resource. Right. So when you build that relationship with yourself, you're going to identify where your resource is in your body, and it's going to be that much easier to access.